Emilio, the Honey Badger, Urutia! Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. We're live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Honey Badger Hour podcast. It's your boy, the Badger, and we are back. And this week, we are joined back for the second time, the big dog, my brother, teammate, training partner, Jonathan Catalone. What's happening, big dog? Come on, brother. My man. Good to see you, papa. How's, How's it man? going, dog? Good, man. It's not like we haven't seen each other in a minute, right? I know. I know. I see Training you every together. day, bro. It's just yeah, like old man. school. I know. Oh, so last time we did the podcast, dog, uh, I wasn't working at Boxer yet. Oh, I now know. we're going to yeah. boxing. Now we're doing the thing, dang, bro. Oh, How fun, we're, man. We're, we're back, man. It's the busy. boys are back, dog. Like, hey. This for a minute. This is the third gym. Third third gym. And I think like our fourth job working together. <laughs> Wherever yeah. I go, you go. Wherever yeah, you go, bro. I go. <laughs> we, we always linked up, right? That's good. <laughs> we always find each other, right? Like, yeah, it's no. crazy. Um, uh, yeah, back in the day. Tiger, now now I'm now you do now you're opening the doors for me like uh, a boxer, so it's been great, man. Yeah, man. Training's going good. Uh, the jiu-jitsu program's off and popping, bro. It's doing great, man. I'm freaking. I'm I'm excited. You know, like first you start opening, you starting to have your own students for very very first time. Like you actually own students because even when when I trained in Tiger, there were students from you know the coaches that were there. I was just covering some classes with you yeah. and stuff. But yeah. it's, it's not the same feeling when. They are like uh, like teammates you're training with, and when you actually have students, like a, when you build a, a bond. bigger responsibility, you have a bigger bond, exactly. Yeah. And now you're out there coaching them, like coming from your source. So yeah, very, uh, something very different that I'm experiencing this time around. But yeah, it's very nice, man. It's good. No, it's- yeah, the environment and like I think that's important too. Like um, a lot of people look over that, like like uh, how connected with your team are you? You know what I mean? We're like some oh, gym, yeah. some gyms, you know, like. I mean, from us, like, cause you can go to like a big fighter main gym and just go get your work in and go home. And then there's other gyms where, like, you know, people, everybody's gonna be kind of entwined and know it's, it's each other and talk to each other more. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. I think you've done a good job of building that culture now at the gym that you at with with the boys. You know? Yeah. Thank you, man. I'm, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I feel like this is just uh, taking taking from the experience I have ga- gaining from, you know, when I started training here, going overseas and training, coming back here and training at a bigger gym, um, at a masters. And I, I think it's just a build of everywhere I've been uh, training, the people that I've been training with, everything that I've been applying for myself, and now being able to give it back to my guys. So that's uh, that's also pretty exciting, and and it's also good to have you and the team because I know like you and I have kind of like the same style. So yeah, it's always things that are sometimes I need to get covered with, and you remind me of those things, you know, like the the, the wrestling, the the things they need, and you can also have the the experience as a fighter as well, you know, to, to bring it to the table. So it's also awesome to have you in, in the team, man. Oh, yeah, we're rocking and rolling, baby. And speaking of, the the, the purpose of today's episode, if we're even going to use that first three minutes, oh, <laughs> we're yeah. gonna, yo, UFC 298 is coming up. We both have experience with both fighters, right? Yes, well, sir. how much you, you trained? We got, so guys, UFC 298, Alex Volkanovsky versus the undefeated Young up and coming prospect Ilya Teporia. What are you thinking Ilya Teporia versus Alex Volkanovsky? What's your predictions? So 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 here's the thing. So Ilya has a I mean Ilya brings a lot of power. Um, he has amazing wrestling defense as much as he has offense. Uh, his jiu-jitsu is top level, and his hands he's just dynamite, bro. He has a lot of power now. I feel like his last two fights has been the one the he fought name people. Yeah. So we have um okay, but Josh Emmett, I mean Josh Emmett's tough. I mean but I mean he just you saw uh Emmett he killed just, Bryce he just, Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell. And just then killed he killed Bryce, uh, but Bryce, Bryce Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell's as well. on short short notice dog, you know? True too. But the but second, he still killed him. I mean, like yeah. whatever, you know. I mean, it's not the first he time he hard. kills. He kills someone. I mean, he has done it nah, he's over and over. Count. You know what I mean? Nah. He just has. He has the the one hand, the right hand, man, and it's crazy. But the one thing that I'm that I can see from this is like the push they're doing to Tipuria now is not allowing him to get the most damage, which actually happened to Connor as well. When we look at it, like Connor, Connor didn't really fought anybody big names at all. Um, he fought. Uh, 
what was he last fight before he fought the champ? Like Dennis. Um, oh man, I don't even know. You who know he the, fought the old before. the old guy, Dennis Seaver. Dennis Seaver was don't one of these fights. His, no, yeah, no, no. He fought Dennis remember. Seaver. He fought Dennis Seaver, Marcus Brimage, uh, Dustin Poirier, Dustin Poirier, and yeah. Max Holloway. And Max Holloway. Oh, pretty, sorry, uh, Dustin yeah, Poirier, but Max he, Holloway. But back yeah, then, those back guys then, weren't back even then, close. Max, yeah, that was not Max, Max Holloway. Holloway. No, that mm. was a Max Holloway that was winning, losing. Yep. And that was a Dustin Poirier that was. Now Poirier was like doing really good up until that fight. Yeah, and then he turned it but around. still, but like it was, it up. was not, it was not the same Dustin Poirier we see now. No, 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 it was not the killer. So what I mean is, like he didn't, yeah, he yeah. he didn't really get to fight the top dogs. While Jose Aldo had already, and people were were saying Jose Aldo's gonna win because he already had fought everybody in the line, so he had more um, experience, but he also had more mileage. So what happened after yeah. that? And he knew how to get into his head. Now, the difference yeah, between I don't know, bro. I don't think that. Um, but he wasn't. I'm trying to think how was people favoring Jose Aldo really big on that fight? Or? Uh, I don't think so. I think they were remember actually. Conor McGregor was just, for some reason he the hype got. Who did he beat? Can you see what? Um, uh, um, Chad Mendes on the last. Uh, uh, that's Chad he, Mendes yep. was a fight to get him. Yeah. To, that's right. To a short notice. Short he notice. He was gonna yep. fight somebody else. Who was he supposed? Who got hurt? Um, Aldo got hurt then. I forgot, but he got the inter inter bell in that during that time. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, how he yeah. ended up fighting for the inter bell, and um, um, it was on short notice as well. Um, that's right. Okay, so. But what I what I what I insane. yeah what I mean by that is is um what what I'm looking at right now is not He's the same it's not people. the same comparison, but like they're not putting Ilya to fight all the way down. Um, even though he already fought the top contender, like who else do you gotta fight to nah. fight for the belt? You know, he hasn't well, he fought. Definitely... He, has, he hasn't fought. Um, he hasn't fought Holloway. Arnold, I know Arnold Allen, Mosver. I know. You know what I'm I saying? I mean, it's it definitely it's definitely there's yes. Some killers. Exactly. And the thing is, in that you know the UFC, there's some killers from like 15 to 8. Yeah. That will keep you on the bottom forever if you just can't get. There's some guys. Ex yeah. From like 5 to 10, bro. That top 10 is crazy. Where there's like the last four or five, you think they're gatekeepers, but they're also like. Yes, but you're not gonna beat them unless you're top top. The, the thing is, Alex already ran through all the top. So yeah. to me, is who's next? So that he has to he has to jump in front before something Knocks happens. Him off. You know, and then yeah, and he's he's fresh as well, young and hungry. Yeah. Who else can we, we? Who else can we give Alex to? No, we need to put a fresh face because uh, yeah. that's that's what Alec, Volkanovski was saying that too. Alex was saying he's like, yo, when he was when him and Ilya were talking crap to each other, he was yeah. like, yo, whatever you do, just don't fight Max Holloway. Yeah, that's what Volkanovski told him. He's like, yo, don't fight Max. Max is gonna smash you, and you're not gonna be allowed. But to I fight feel like him. that will be. I feel like that will be an amazing fight. <laughs> That'll be a dope ass fight. Actually. Um, whether 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 he at. wins or lose, I mean, remember, like I said, whether whether uh, Ilya wins or lose. Uh, Max Holloway will be a great fight because they're two strikers. I know they're not going to try to take each other to the ground. They're both going to want to go in and, and, and try to knock each other out, right? Yeah. Um, and if, it's, if, it's, if, if, I'll say, if he gets to win the belt um, and there's no rematch and they put uh, Max Holloway, Max Holloway has been always at the door with Bro. Alex and he, cannot be, he hasn't been able to beat Alex. So having a new face for him to get back, it's also exciting to see. That's when that, that's when you start seeing the whole um, featherweight division kind of like changing, you know? Which yeah. you feel like Alex is keeping everybody at the door and allowing everybody to pass. And it just, I don't know if it's because I'm not say boring because it's not going to say boring for that. But I feel like people want to see always like a new face, like a new challenge, right? No, for sure. And here's the catch, dog. I don't think, I don't think Taporio... I think Taporia and Holloway is a harder match for Taporia than Volkanovski. I almost feel like style styles make style like, fights, right? So. I feel like you wouldn't touch Holloway, you know? Like it'd be way I don't know, it's just, I don't know how to say that. Like um just yeah, I don't know, dog. I don't know. I would see Holloway but, but was, when you think about that though, I think Holloway versus Taporia and I'm just like he's way more elusive, way longer, you know, hard to hit. Still hasn't been dropped. I don't think guy's ever been dropped yet, bro. I don't think he's ever been. Cool. I don't think Holloway's ever hit the butt, hit the floor in UFC. I think he's the best chin in MMA history, bro. Yeah, but he also, he also, he also, he also, he also, he also. Poirier rocked him. Poirier rocked him. Yeah, but, pretty bad. I mean, it was a stoppage, right? It was a stoppage on, nah, for, on the fourth no, round. No, no, I think it was decision. Oh no, I think it was decision. I'm not sure now. Yeah, I think I think it was it was decision, right? But it was bro, a hard fight. Um, 
to pour it, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. I just we haven't seen him tested, bro. Has he ever even lost a round in the UFC yet? And he got dropped that one time, so he might have lost that round. Then he got dropped. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't even never seen that fight, but bro, yeah. that's what thing. This is what I'm not sold on a contender. If I gotta go on YouTube and watch your fights, I'm just not sold on you yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. If I gotta go look for you to see who's fighting the champ. And then I'm like, mm, it's hard to sell. Yeah, you know I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing. I mean, Alex I'm has already... I'm going to be a little biased, yeah. obviously. You know? Yeah, yeah. So Alex already has all the credentials. I mean, we know he already fought everybody in the, you know, everybody in the line. Top 10, I think he already beat them all. <laughs> you know, before he even got to the title. And yeah. after the title, I mean, he fought nothing but like the top contenders. Everybody, everybody didn't come in to him, you know, no, so too, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a great journey. The, the clean one, zombie, he fought like a clean Korean zombie, you know? Like, yeah. Clean zombie, he fought was like on a run, dog, you know? And then he, yeah, he's, he's been, bro, his reign has been unbelievable. His fight with Brian Ortega is the one that would like, it's crazy, because like he smashed Brian Ortega that whole fight. Oh yeah, no, that but fight, he just had that, that two close call, he had that one close call, but that close call is actually like the, it's like the best thing that ever happened to him, dog, because they get to show his, showcase his heart, which is his most, for me, like the most impressive thing about Volkanovski is like the intangibles. Yeah, the in, I, I, like the I also you can't see. Yeah, you know, like people don't understand like his work ethic and his heart. Those are two things that you can't really measure unless you just yeah. show it. You know, of course. And he's been so dominant in all his fights, so it was good that he had that lapse where he got caught in the guillotine for a second, but then he was able to show that like, yo, you gotta yeah. fucking, you know what I mean? Like you gotta kill me, bro. Like, and with the Max Holloway when he got dropped and he got right back and just started going after it. So yeah, it's crazy, yo. Yeah, that's that's like, good. I mean, some you know you know some some fighters they usually get you know they get touched and they wake up, or whatever the case might be. I mean, we we seen we seen Alex and in, in action and yeah, you know he hasn't really been touched much in his last fights. He's been you know pretty good with you know he knows he knows his distance. He knows bro. when to go in, when to go out, when to switch. And and to me, like this fight is one of those fights that anything can happen, obviously, because we're coming he's coming against a guy who has a lot of power. And um also it's like different styles to anything he has fought by far, I think. Um this guy's gonna box more. We don't know if he's gonna wanna uh, go, go down to the ground. We, I don't think I don't think Elias and I wanna do that. I just gonna gonna look forward to 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 go for the knockout. Um what do you what do you what do you think uh, the best game plan for Alex would be against Tipuria? Bro, easy money, not easy money. But if I was Alex, I would yo he doesn't check low kicks, and he's very methodical. Like he's he's I was saying this in my last thing. I didn't want to sound like I said he was very basic, but I don't mean by basic. I just mean he's very classic style. Like yeah, and like bro, he's like he's one two. He's very fundamental, fundamentally sound, which is what you want, but. If I was Alex, the game plan to beat Tepoya is you cook his legs in round one, use your distance and feints. I would come out fainting right away and let him know that you're not going to touch me, you know? Yeah. Like, let him know I that mean, you're, you're in and out, like you're too slow, number one. Yeah. Like, out right away in the first round, let him know that he's too slow and that you're too smart. And that's why Alex kills you was in those first three minutes. It's this pressure that you can't... This is what I'm saying with the intangibles, bro, because training with him for years and understanding, like, you can't explain what he's doing when he's... Like when he's doing it, like you see these guys, and like when you get stuck and they get tired, it's because even when he's not moving, he's moving. Like he's yeah. not throwing, but he's moving. He's fainting. He's shifting. He's lifting. He's switching stances. That's a, that's one thing. So, about, oh. That's one thing that I love about about Alex, especially is like he moves, man. Like for a forty fiver, he moves a lot. And even though you don't, it doesn't seem like it, like you said. But nah, I mean, he's, he's flyways always, yeah. are the ones that move the the fastest, and and Alex can move, man. He doesn't stop moving for twenty five minutes. And and like as you said, like Alex, Alex does kick, like Alex does kick. So if he takes the, he's the, got more the lead leg, yeah, he has more weapons in, in that area. He's got elbows, he's got kick. You know, he has powerful. Oh, he's hurt people with, in fights with elbows. Yeah, he's hurt people with. You know what I'm saying? He can low kick you. Yeah, so my bad so, to cut you off. No, uh, yeah, of course. No, I was gonna say low kick uh, real quick, and then go. I'll give past the mic. Uh, low kick, um, low kick him in the first. Chop his legs, take away his mobility, take away his power because he's got real big, strong hands. That's a, that's take the thing. Once you once you once you take the lead hand, uh, I mean, sorry, the, the the lead leg, you're gonna take his his his, his power, right? So, round so, two, I put him against the fence and hold him and fucking drain him and, tire and, then, finish, his hands. and then finish him on third round. F TKO in third round. I would like to, but I would like to see him get it standing on the feet. TKO. I know that's what he wants, but he's too smart. Like he's not gonna just go for. He's gonna go where he wins, where he feels he's the strongest. You know. Yeah, which is like I said, this is this is my 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 thing with with that particular thing. Like I I yeah, of course that will be the whole game. My my thing is, I mean, Ilya does have 
his hands are, are really good. He's a very smart fighter too. Um, and it's just not getting caught with one of those punches, man, because those things yeah. to put him asleep, bro. I mean, I know Alex has not been knocked out in the UFC like that besides the last fight he had, which is another thing that I feel like as a as a, as a fighter, right? Like, I know Alex has a great mindset. Like, his way he sees things, like, he, he has a great mindset. But um, I wonder how what Ilya is feeding from as well. Like, oh, okay, he just got knocked out his last fight. And it's like, oh, you know, he starts seeing things like, I can do it too. You know, like, if he gets knocked out, it's a chance that nobody, somebody can knock them out. Because when you don't see somebody getting knocked out at all, you, you might think, I'm like, that's difficult to knock this guy out. But now you've seen him actually getting dropped. And it's like, you know, maybe you can feel from that too. So that's another thing, you know, like it gives you a little bit of a, of a, of a not going to say an edge because it's not, it's not having an edge, but just having the confidence that you can also knock the other champ, you know? And um, I mean, I bet he also also has it as a, as a contender itself. He knows from the from the beginning, he's been saying, you know, like I'm going to be the next champ. So you got to have that in your mind regardless. But when you see the, the, the champ coming into a different weight division and getting knocked out, it's like, oh, okay. But that's you know? a catch, yo. It's a different weight division. Yeah. Right? On a short notice. And short notice, bro. And a short notice where he wasn't really like, you know, like, you got to prepare the body for war. You yeah. Know? That, like, that's, that's, that's true. And, bro, honestly, it was the weight. I, you know, we're not even talking about how much weight did he cut. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, we always forget, too, that it's more than just the fight itself. It's just the preparation to the fight. How many, how, like, how yes. good was a camp? You, he didn't really have a camp for that. He also, he's always training because that's, that's, that's what fighters do. They just train, train, train. But when you don't, when you're not specifically training, um, thinking you're gonna fight, which he, I, I bet he probably took it as maybe I'd be a backup, and he was training for a fight. But it's not the what? same when you know you're gonna fight. You can always train as a backup, but it's not the same when you know you're gonna fight. You know? Yeah, but he wasn't even in shape for like a backup. Because, that's what I'm saying. Um, because that's, that's what I'm saying. He was not even he, in shape for that. When he fought, uh, when Oliver, when he was on. Um, when he was back up for Oliveira and Makachev, yeah, he was ready. He was ready. You see, he, then he was trading like he knew maybe something could happen, but because he knew also this, the stacks, like he knows like he uh, wasn't ready, ready. Yeah, but he was more ready than the last one. But he was way more. Oh man, yeah, because he went to Abu Dhabi with Shea and them, you know. So he trained like about a month. He got uh, off a of hand surgery, I think, and he was like off the Max Holloway fight, right? Yeah, he did. He broke did his that. hand in the Max Holloway fight. Mm. So he just got off a of hand surgery and then he made weight. So he was like in good nick, but they were kind of like happy ones when they both made weights. Like, all right, good. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, for yeah. sure. For sure. But man, um, the Magachev fight with Volk, bro, the first time, when he's in the training camp, you see like how tight of a fight that is, you know? Man, oh. I, I, I. How I, much of a training I, camp or is that just fighting is crazy? Man, I, I mean. Cause you're, when you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, when you're training for three months, like you're also more prepared to take the punches, you know? 100%, I mean, you're and training you're constantly. you recover better. So even if you get dropped, if you're like in good shape, you know what I mean? Like you're in yeah. good nick or whatnot. And I feel like he trains very smart too. It's like a lot, a lot of the, the the sessions for what I've seen, um, his, his team, uh, the way they train, they don't go 100% like some gyms do. Like some some gyms, they, they, bro, they get CTE during camp before you have the fight. So by the time you fight, you have a... You 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 get dropped just because you're constantly getting dropped in training. So these people are being a little more smart with the way they train. They train hard, but they also train smart. You know, they 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 train at a level where they're not like hurting each other. You know, but they're there sometimes they have some rounds where they actually pushing. Nah, they go. They for are it. pushing their, their their lungs, but always remember like you you want you know when you can take a punch. You know, like you don't have to get punched in the face all the time to know I can take a punch. Sometimes you take those extra punches, by the time you get to the fight, you're too hurt. You take that punch and then you're out, you know? Oh yeah, and a lot of times you get to the fight and then you're already done, you know? Like yeah. I remember my, uh, our boy, uh, John Chavez, bro, like I remember he was fighting and then um, he got dropped in sparring like a week before his fight, he got knocked out in sparring. Yep. And then when he fought a week later, bro, he got dropped with a jab in the first punch yeah. of the fight. And I was like freaking out. I remember we were cornering, I was with Joe Ray and everybody. Uh, he got dropped with a jab, like in the first minute, or, you know, like first couple of exchanges, he got dropped with a jab right away. Yeah. Then he almost choked the guy with a guillotine, and then the guy finished him with an uppercut. And it was like, yo, he was dead. I think I was dead there. Enough. I think I was there. Nah, oh, no, oh, I was in Jacksonville. No? Oh, okay, okay, okay. But bro, like, it was bad, dog. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. he just got a bad concussion a week before because he didn't let his brain recover. You know? Exactly. And you gotta remember, like, the, the the brain is literally just like the body, man. Like, you also have to give your brain a break. 
when it comes down to getting hit and getting punches because you're getting bruised inside. You don't see that. Like at least, for example, when you're fighting and you're getting, you know, you're getting, I don't know, punch in the head or uh, in the face or something, you might see a bruise here or why not, like maybe a cut and you know you have to give it a break. You know, if your hands are hurting, your elbows are hurting, you know you got to give it a break. But inside of your brain, you don't know. Yeah, man. You know? And then once you start to take in the extra punches, you might feel ready, but your inside of your brain is still bruised. And then once you go into fight and into fight day, your your brain now might be a, not, might not be a hundred percent yet. And you know, like I said, one jab can be the termination of you know getting getting rocked. Yeah, you know? but um, this is that part of the game, man. The game is tough. You know, it's it's difficult sometimes to not have those extra hard sessions because you feel like you need that. Yeah, yeah. You want to get the that whole... extra in so you can sleep good at night. You know, like yeah, exactly. There's for, uh, there's nothing worse than going into a fight. Uh, questioning if you're prepared or not. Like when you yeah. make that walk, no matter what, like the one thing you want to know is that you did everything possible. Even if you did too much, I'd rather have done too much and go into the fight than not enough. Even that's my mentality, but this is how, you know, I'm fucked. Cause even as a fighter, I say that, but as a coach and as a strength or co and any conditioning coach will tell you, or any proper coach will tell you, it should be the opposite. Yeah. You know, like it's, you it's save it for the being, fight. It's different being in the, in the fighter's mind. You know, it's like running a marathon. You know, when you run a marathon, you don't run the 26, when you do the marathon, 26.2 miles, you yeah. don't run the marathon. You don't do it. I Never. thought you need to, like, you do like a, the most you do is like 10 miles, 14 miles. I think you do a half. I forgot what the protocol was because I did the training camp for it, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, um, but you don't just do this one because then people will leave it all. You don't want to leave all, you, you want to save your legs for the race. Yeah. Where I know, um, our coach was good about that and, and, um, before, which is hard to do, you know, mentally. Correct. But yeah, the brain, you don't know what kind of damage. Like even if a sparring session, like if you get like if you get flashed and you don't you don't say, you just keep going and nobody knows, you don't really know what that how long that's gonna be uh, affecting you, you know? Yeah. Oh the, the head thing is crazy, bro. Yo, after that fight with um in Malaysia when you, when you cornered me, when I went to Singapore, I was I was bro, I was, I was had headaches for a month after but, that fight. Yeah. So Yeah, man, of course. A rough fight will do it for you for sure, man. Yeah. But yeah, man. I mean, once again, you know, the this this fight is, uh, I think, is gonna be. You can start it with maybe I don't know. I'll say maybe this could be like part of the year already. And starting the year, man, like yo, stacked this cards fight already. Is oh no, gonna be. This great, fight card man. is stacked. Cause we'll put, oh yeah, so let's put, yeah, but this fight card is stacked. The first card of the year wasn't that good. Sean Strickland, Duplessis, you know. Oh man, the fight, the fight. Did you watch that fight? I, I thought I thought Duplessis won, but I haven't. I gotta rewatch it, bro. I don't know. I thought I he think won. I, I think it was a, it was a, clo it was a close fight just because uh, at the fifth round. I think there were two two to the fifth round. I think the fifth round was going to be the determinant of who was gonna win. And I think uh, um, Sean Chicken won the. Sean Chicken was it was coming back. I was throwing a lot of jabs and stuff, but. I feel like they were both very sloppy, to be honest. Like, bro, sloppy. They were missing. Bro. It was like, for being for a championship, I feel like that's there was. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Just for a championship, I Yo, feel like it, yeah, it was bro. too. I'm not fighting for no title. I'm not saying I'm there or nothing like. Yeah, so yeah, I know dude. what you're saying, but bro, when I was watching that fight, you know what I was thinking? All these people hating on Izzy, talking shit, and then look what you're stuck with now. You know, like everybody was so happy when he lost, and all the like the Sean Strickland got like a big fan base. I know people yeah. love him, but like, but this, another but this thing. is what you got. You got average versus average. That's what I felt like. Yo, this is the UFC. You're watching yeah. these two, like, and you're just like, yo, what happens? You went Anderson Silva, uh, style bender, and now we got this, bro. What <laughs> happened, dog? You know what I'm saying? That's what I was thinking when I was like, I but this is the, this I'm is not saying they're sloppy because this is their first, that was their first. Title defense for yeah. Sean Strickland. Yeah, yeah. And that was this guy's first title fight, right? But also, I also wonder if how much of those styles make a yeah. fight. Oh, for sure. Because, everything, everything. Because I bro. feel like Strickland has to be very awkward to fight that guy. I Strick mean, but they're both awkward. That's the thing. Yeah, but that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. they're both awkward. Look what so happened to gonna... look what happened to Whitaker. Whitaker lost to Duplessis. So, bro, so Duplessis killed Whitaker, and Sean Strickland dominated fucking Izzy. What the fuck? Oh, hey, hey, you, you see what I mean? Bro, and, and my now, brain now look, is broken. Now, now, now look at my easy. brain is broken. Now look at easy and look at uh, um, what's it called? A Whitaker's fight. You know what I mean? Super what high level technical dog. Imagine that. Look at that. Right? And it's like how you watch Whitaker easy. You're like, oh, this is a title fight. This yeah, is two exactly. of the best in the yep. world fighting each other. Yep. But if you watch Sean Strickland and Duplessis, you're like, you know, if you're just in the bar chilling, and you don't know nothing. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Sean Strickland's the people's champ, dog. He's America's champ right now. But he turned. 
he has a cult following. Like, he's become a Diaz brother. Yeah, he's becoming the, the Donald Trump. <laughs> he's a Diaz brother, yeah. Like, uh, um, but like I said, dog, I'm rocking with my boy, dog. I know people, uh, is he, bro? We I mean, do, we I, need, I, we, I hope he comes back, you know? Like, we need, I would say the UFC needs him back, or would want him back, you know? But, well, like, what's next now for Duplessis? Alex, um, I'm sorry, Alex. Um, for Duplessis, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna have a sidebender. Which remember, they talk a lot of crap between both of them. Talk a lot of shit between both. So, I think it's it's the perfect time. <sighs> I don't want to see a rematch between between those two. That's the one thing I can say. I don't yeah, want to yeah. see a I don't want to see a I don't want to see a rematch in the fight. Like I would like to see Izzy Strickland too. Mm. I really would, dog, just to fucking make that right. Or it's a tough call. Because it's like, yo, feel, do you yeah. just know it's a bad matchup? Stay you, away. You see what I'm that, saying? Put yeah. that guy back on the bottom where he was. Because, like, yo, he was never going to get to the top. Yeah. He was, like, one of those guys that was stuck on the bottom. And we were talking about it before. That there's, like, a group of guys from 5 to 10 that will just keep you out of the, the championship forever. Yeah. And the UFC sometimes will put the champions that they want ahead of those guys. I don't, you know I don't, saying? I don't think that they thought the like. The, look, the they didn't want to give, him. bro. You know, they didn't want to give Strickland the title shot. Yeah, Izzy asked for it. Izzy wanted to fight in Australia. I think I, I'm pretty sure that was the word, like on the street, that they were like, nah. Uh, they were, yeah, like they didn't even want to give him the title shot. And yeah. who did he beat? He fought. Who did Strickland beat to get? To, he fought some guy that I never seen fight before and fight in a fight night. He fought an undefeated guy or something like a tough guy, like a Cheshire guy or something, but. A guy I never heard of, you know? He yeah. got him tired and fucking melted him. Yeah, no, Fight night, I, remember? Yeah, I, I think... Like a I think or I something missed, like this, I think you know? I, I missed that, that fight, but... Um, I mean, definitely, definitely, he he's he has he has some, you know? Um, but I was not expecting him to be easy like that. Um, I think it was I don't bad know, timing. I, I think don't it was know. bad timing, bro. I think Izzy might have slept on him. Not slept on him, but, like, you know how it is, man. And I think he got a DUI, like, a couple weeks before that fight. No idea. Once again, this is the thing, man. Like sometimes, I mean, sometimes, sure, like, like, and it was disclosed or something like this, but it got released after the fight. So like, yeah. Here, I mean, I don't know what the DUI consists of. Like, if you went to jail or not, but like, yo, if you're drinking, yeah, to, within a month of a title fight, you know what I'm saying? And not having like a glass of wine. If you're drinking enough to get a DUI, like, yo, yeah. coño. <laughs> Which I, I was I, talking about, talking about that. You know that I saw, I saw a video. They were saying the. Tipuria was actually saying that he like, oh, the, the camp is, is done already. Like, you know, he was drinking wine, but they were showing like they were drinking bottles of wine, right? So he like, oh, that's my tradition. What do you think about that? What, he did that? Is that for real? Yeah, it's, it's a video. It's a video out there saying like, uh, oh, like, what do you think about like... I don't know was, if that's he was real. Doing it. He, no, he said it. He like, well, the... the, the um, what was it? He was like saying like the, the camp is, is done already. This is the way I, I usually do like, you know, to celebrate. He like, I'm already content with what I what I accomplished. And he like, I know people's success means this, but for me success means like, you know, being surrounded with your friends and all that stuff. So he like, the way he celebrates pretty much is like, um, yeah, he likes to celebrate with a wine or why not? Like he also helps him out cutting weight because it dehydrates him more than he, than he needs, which- That's retarded. I didn't, I didn't understand I, I that part. Yeah, bro, wine is terrible for you. Like uh, gives you headaches. Uh, no, I, I don't know how, sugar, I don't know how sugar. much, I don't know how much, but I used to drink wine. I drink wine in training camp. Like I, I have like um. All right, I know what he's saying. Like I've done that because they have like red. Supposedly a glass of wine is good for you once in a while. A glass of wine, yeah. yeah. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but I and I've done that, but by accident. Where like I'll get a glass of wine with my chick in the training camp, like two three weeks out, and then I accidentally drink like half a bottle. Like, Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then when I wake not up the next day, I'm not feeling too happy with myself, and I'm in training camp. You know, so yeah. it's not gonna kill you, but I wouldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? A title fight, like yo. You step it up eventually, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't drink no wine, dog. Nah, title fight, you see? I know, against So against you're asking Alex. me what I think, <laughs> and yeah, like, you're asking me what I think, I think that's crazy, but I'm not him, dog. So yeah, yeah. they've been doing that. Everybody's different, bro. Everybody's different. That's I know saying, guys like, who have sex before, they, after they win, bro. Yeah. They want to go out, and they go out and smash before their fight. Yeah. Some boxers say Connor, they Connor did that. He's like three months. Exactly, yeah. I mean. So I don't know, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, this this world of fighting different. is different. I, I, what it, I think I feel like it's more has to do more with uh how do you how do you call that when when you believe in something? Um, yes, it's a mentality, bro. It's a mentality, dog. What you do is what you do. 
You can't let it affect your 25 minutes. You got to think at the end of the day, it's the fight. It's 25 exactly, minutes. Yeah, and no yeah. matter what happens, you're going to show up for those 25 minutes. That's what yeah. makes Volk, I think, so strong because nobody knows about the crazy camp seat. Like, bro, we want to talk about, we were talking about this before. You want to talk about the wear and tear, bro? The wear and tear, doubt. that guy, like, I know we were saying, like, uh, they're smart about sparring always. Since I've known him, he's always been good. Like, yo, he's never like teed off on me or like, you know, he, like now if you go, he's going to go. That's the thing about Volk, yeah. you know, and he's down for it. He's a killer, bro. Don't get, don't respect, don't respect his uh, kindness for weakness. You know oh, what of I'm course, saying? of course. No, he's no, a no, killer. Definitely. So when they turn it up on him, that's why he was like the regulator at Tiger when we were there. Yeah. Like when all these Cheshian wrestler guys are coming in and throwing everybody, like, yo, we put him with Volk and then Volk fucking breaks them all. Yeah, I'm telling yeah. you. And I'm talking about, and when I say break, I'm talking, I'm not talking about a couple rounds. I'm talking about one five minute round with Volk and these guys have to take a break after. I, they I cannot I, do the round after. I remember, I remember seeing that's him. That's our. I remember That's seeing him our, train that. That was our f and dog Volk back in the day at Tiger when he was like he would get to like 170 in between fights. When he got to the UFC, he changed his like he changed that. Like he wouldn't yeah. break one like he stays light. Yeah. Because he's a demon. But when he was outside the UFC, he was still gaining a little bit of weight in between fights. Bro, that guy at 170, 175 was killing everybody at the gym. It didn't matter if you were a 205er. Oh, Jeff just posted a video the other day of him sparring with Duplessis, taking him down. Mm. That was the Volk that, like, that was the tryouts Volk. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. So, um, I forgot what the tangent we went on the, for that. Oh, the mentality, bro. The, yeah. the, the training camps, bro. That guy comes into some of these fights, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's conditioned, but what he goes through to get there is no joke, bro. Like, I bet. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, that's, how, that's what separates the, it's the camps. It's no joke. You know I mean? Like... Yeah, and he's not going to complain. He's not going to say anything. The guy will never say a word. He's just going to do the work, you know? So, 100%. And that's why I've, that's one of the things you got to love about these guys. Like, uh, you respect his vulnerability when he's training. Like, he's not afraid to lose, you know? Like, he'll go in there and, like, and be completely fucked and then finish around, you know? But what we were saying about that before with the regulator and stuff, I forgot we got on a tangent. What regulator? Oh. We are talking about how um, the weight size is or something. Anyways, yeah, now nah, he's a. Uh, so Taporia drinking wine, was that was that just recently? Like Man, that, that was literally no, that was literally it was a video that I saw that I saw they um they send them in the in the group chat that I have with the boys from uh, my brother and and, and the and the guys from Masters, um they send the video and I'm like oh what do you think is this real and then we were like you know just kind of like talking about it and I looked at the video and it literally just it just shows like him um, drinking wine and that's it bro like just talking about like the way he does things during that time and look it's actually here i have it so you can kind of like see it look yeah but that's just bro that's them bro that's not him no but he's talking about it nah it could also have been an old video who knows i mean i don't know Nah, it's an old video. I don't know what that is. This is fake news, dog. I'm not buying this shit. Because he's talking about making weight tomorrow. So unless he had wine. Damn, he's listening to Gypsy Kings. Respect. <laughs> And I'm like, yo, he looks faded as fuck. No, no, but uh, of course, I mean, once again, uh, to me, it does, um, like you said, man, it's like, it depends on how, pe how people usually do things, you know, like, I know there are some people that like during training camps, I, I talk to like some of like the, the, the Russian and stuff that like they eat bread, they drink beers and they eat steaks. And I'm like, whoa, that sounds they drink like. beer, but which Russians? Because usually they're Muslim, they don't drink beer. No, 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 not those, but like I remember in Thailand, I talked to some like some people, and they're like, "Oh yeah, like the way to the train, like boxers and stuff." They were like, "Oh yeah, they just they they drink beer, they eat bread, and then I and if I'm not mistaken, bro, I'm gonna say I saw a video on Vasil Lomachenko, if I'm not mistaken, or something. They were talking about it, eating eating bread, drinking beer only. Hey, my boy always said a happy fighter is a motivated fighter. 
You know, he's like, there's nothing worse than being depleted of everything and going to the gym and doing what you love. So that's going back to the mentality thing. Like, yeah, bro. Like that's, that's also goes to like a mentality thing. You wonder, right? Like if you're out there drinking and stuff in the middle of camp, like, are you that confident that you're going to win? Or you just know, you know, like it's a weird one. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think that's legit. I don't think that was from now. I don't think so either, man. It looks, like, it looks like a different, bro, like, like a younger version. I don't and know. he's not even drinking, dog. He can be faking the funk. It could. That's and all that's, yeah, and it looks like his teammate, his team is drinking. Because I know they do that all the time. Like, look, when Volk fights and the boys are training, like, yo, on the last camp, on the last training session of his, all the boys go out and go hard, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he's in training camp, you know? Yeah. Or, like, on fight week, you know what I mean? Like, these guys that will have wing night, like, on Tuesday, where we all go out and we get wings and beer and hang out, and then Volk oh, is okay. sleeping. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Yeah. So he could have just been with the team, like, and I know that they do that at CKB too, like for Izzy and, and Volk, whenever they're fighting, um, they always have like a team dinner at the end of camp. They have like a big barbecue. Yeah, yeah. Like when I was in City Kickbox, when I was in New Zealand for the month with Brad and Dan Hooker, for Dan Hooker's, when they were fighting in the New Zealand card, right? Yeah. Um, on the There was three guys on the card. It was Kai, Dan Hooker, and um, Brad, Brad Riddell. Oh, okay. so Kai Car France, Brad Riddell, Dan Hooker. And at the end of that camp, like on their last spider session on the Saturday, like that Sunday, we all had like, uh, Eugene has like, they order like, bro, like I'm talking about like a hundred steaks, chicken, and they have the whole team come <laughs> and they feast. No, the whole team comes and they all feast wow, together. Man, and then they awesome. do like a big, and then Eugene does, always does a big speech. And then all the fighters that are in the camp, like they thank all the, the training partners for helping them. And then they're like, that's how they break bread at the end yeah. of camp, you know? But everybody there is drinking and partying and hanging out. And the fighters are just like, you know, like have a little bit of food here and there, you know? Yeah. So, like you said, I don't think that's going to change anything, bro. Like, if you're in shape, I don't know. I don't know how um, alcohol, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, definitely. Def that definitely alcohol is, fucks you up, bro. Yeah, it's definitely, like definitely party, that you know? shit fucks you up. Like, no, I know they say that one glass of wine is good for the blood. You know, it's like some things. My, uh, Danny, Danny, before his fights, he drank wine. Okay, that's during, what I was saying. I drink, yeah, yeah. yeah, I have a glass of wine. A glass dinner. of wine, you know. When we go to fatties, uh, that's oh. not gonna affect too much. I know it um, raises your your, yeah. your your blood and. Stuff. Oh no no bro! Like uh, when we used to remember we used to go to fatties in Thailand. Yeah. After training, we oh go, God, on Friday fatties, we used to go to fatties yeah, yeah. with everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yo, I was in training camp a lot of those fights, and yeah. but after the last sparring, we go to fatties. I get a big ass salad and I get a glass of wine. You know, yeah. like, so for sure, dog. Um, yeah, that's just uh, up to the person. I would say, you know. Yeah. Yo, UFC 98, 44 minutes. We were only talking the first. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, we have we have some good. You have little clips for everything. <laughs> I don't even think we did a proper pre pre breakdown, but we now we're gonna. Okay, for the clips. Okay, boom, boom. So, co main event. Uh, who do you got? We do. Your, I hear all this wishy washy. This Whitaker chica, versus chica. Paulo Costa. No, no, hold on. We we'll do <laughs> for for our boy to. Okay, Volkanovski, UFC 298. Uh, who do you got, Alex? Predictions, pre-fight predictions. Alex Volkanovski versus Ilya Teporia. Who will win and how? Do you want to guess? Man, I mean, th th here's here's the thing. Like I, as you no know, no wishy washy, dog. We nah, already nah, broke nah, it but, down. Give me. What do you the, think from your heart? Boom. I don't. I know there's a lot of factors. If uh, not, no. If but yes. If of course, if Ilya catches Volkanovski, he's gonna knock him out 100. percent That's that's that's, that's 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 every fight ever of life, though. You know. Yeah, but the, the thing is, it does not, and not anybody can just throw a, throw a punch and be like, oh, that's it, gets knocked out. But I feel like if Ilya does, he he has he has a big chance of, but that's of doing that. Which okay, I he's know got it, the classic puncher's chance. Yeah, like yeah. <sighs> okay, the puncher's chance. But I'm not going against Volks here. There you go, dog. That's go what against I'm talking Volks, about. Man. I mean, no way. Yeah, I wish I had no. the Volkanovski shirt. I got the Bang Tower shirt today because yeah, no. I bought a Volkanovski shirt for the for the UFC fight nights. Yeah. And then, um, but I've been wearing it like I've done it like three podcasts in a row with it. I was like, all right, <laughs> I'm yeah. switch it up. All right, my pre-fight prediction. All right, so you got Volkanovski. How do you got him winning? Decision, or do you think he finishes Ilya Teporia? Ah, uh, man, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that if Volks wins, goes decision. Decision. Yeah. I got Alexander Volkanovsky, round three, TKO, standing on top, ground and pound, elbows straight back, wah, wah, screaming like a madman, because he's going to have a rage inside from the Makachev fight, that he's going to want to make right, because if there's anybody, yo, Alex's biggest enemy is himself, and he's going to be mad at him, so he wants to prove 
Yo, know, that guy, yeah, he's gonna be, I think he's gonna have a, I think, yo, know, he looks in tremendous shape. I saw a video of him the other day, bro. This guy is like, he's shredded to the gills, dog. I think he's gonna put a pace on this guy and make a statement. And he's angry from his last fight. And just like we were saying, he's like, oh, people think that their door was open to beat me. Because he did have another loss against Makacha, but it was like, ooh, you know? like No, no, really but that was, I feel like the first fight, honestly, I feel like the first fight he won. So there you go, right? Yeah. But this one, he finally has like a real loss that you can see. Yeah. And I feel like that's going to make him better. It's going to make him sharper, make well, him more elite. Not that he's ever not sharp. That's the thing. It's not like he got caught slipping. Like, like I think Izzy got caught slipping with Strickland, you know? I don't think Volk is, is going to get allow himself to get caught slipping, especially after seeing what just happened with Izzy, you know? Yeah. So I got Volkanovski, like we were saying before, I got Volkanovski cooking up the legs in round one, chopping him away, take away his power, put him on the fence in round two, let him show him your grappling strength. Now you got him mentally defeated. You're like, yo... You dominate him on the feet. Don't let him touch you, bro. Don't let this guy touch you first round. Feint in and out. Chop away the legs. Round two, put him against the fence. Round three, nice and cooked. Medium rare. Take him down and fucking <laughs> cut that steak open. Cooking with Volk, baby. Cooking with Volk. Round three. That's what I got. All right, That's what I got. That's a good prediction. Round three, Volk is going to cook him up nice and he's going to cook the legs in round one. Then he's going to go up top for the chick for the breast. He's going to go for the breast of the meat. Right with the takedowns up top, hold them against the fence, and then pull them down. That's what I hope. Listen, I think Ilya's great. I have nothing but respect for him. And yo, when we we train one day together, like he came through boxer, so what, I would love it, you know. But like I said, I'm just biased. I'm not really an adrenaline. Dude, so <laughs> it don't matter, dog. Yeah, yeah. Ilya could be on a 14 fight knockout streak with all first round knockouts in yeah. three minutes for his first 14 fights, and I'm gonna be like, nah, he's gonna get smoked against Volk. So yeah, I'm like yeah, blind course. with that yeah, shit, Yeah, of you know? course, no, no, that, that, that's, that's, the, that's the way to, like that's when you show your loyalty no matter what, you know? But also like, you know, I mean, like I said, even though after seeing Ilya knocking out one after the other, after the other, after the <gasps> other. That's what I wanna say. Well, I mean, most of his fights are being, well, actually, you know, the, Ilya, Ilya started with uh, Jiu Jitsu. Actually, he was choking people out. Okay, that's the thing. All right, and and then that's and then he became about. and then he became a, a striker. Now he's like knocking guys out in the UFC. That's you what know? we haven't spoke about. That's what we haven't spoke about. Yeah, he is um, a really good grappler. Yes. Oh, what's gonna happen when Volk has him against the fence? That's what I want to know. And and. Ooh, I'm gonna message Volk about this. He might try to take Volk down. Cause I, he took down Bryce Mitchell, and Bryce Mitchell was the grappler, right? But the, bro, the, the thing about these fights, these fights excited because bro, of that. You don't know. You don't know what he's gonna Bryce do. Mitchell. He took him down with like a, not even a takedown. It was like a, it was like a white belt takedown, bro, with the arm triangle where he like kind of dragged him. Not white belt takedown, but like you know what I'm saying? Like, what <laughs> yeah, yeah, like but a, I don't even know what it was, was like. A pulling him down, or or did he throw him? I don't know. He's got good. Oh, he got good oh, judo. He got good right? judo too. Yeah. I saw him. That way, I saw a video with you. He was throwing. You, you guys were doing some drills in the in the boxer, right? In the ring, you guys trained or? Oh, that was him and his brother. Oh, him. Oh, he was throwing his brother. Yeah. Like, yep. He do, he do a lot a lot of, a lot of suplex on him. Um, yeah, bro. Mostly suplexes. Yeah. All right. See, He's, those are takedowns that I don't really like for MMA. It's just hilarious. Yeah. You know, you know what's funny, dog? I wouldn't even. Two things that I've never, which is you might. Hey, listen, yes, it could be stupid. I'll tell you my mentality on it. Like, it was definitely don't think like this, and I wouldn't coach my students like this, but me coming up, judo and suplexes, all I saw was a lot of energy, a lot of risk, and sometimes a reward. Like, with the judo, even if you take them down, there's so much space, they get up always. This has been my experience, you know, even when I get taken down. Even with those foot trips that are really popular right now, like uh, yeah. the Dana Hart, like all these boom, boom, like, and uh, which is, if you get their hands on the mat, then I see you got to go for the head, you know? But like for MMA, you know, like, bro, that's good to get around them, but it's a lot of space, you know what I'm saying? Like you guys yeah. swept on your butt and you boom, you pop back up. So yeah. that, that one, number one, and I've never been a fan of taking my feet. I'm always trying to pull the guy down, so I've never been a fan of taking the feet off the mat for my opponent, which maybe is something silly either, because for me, there's always been a lot of energy, like suplexing a guy, it's just tiring, dog, you know? I just yeah, never, but for some, me, of these, some of these people are very explosive. I know, dog, but I always wonder, like, do they like, get tired doing that? Like, I don't know, like, because yep. <laughs> you get used to it, but like, I don't know, yeah. I don't, it does feel good ragdolling somebody, like, I if, mean, you if you can do at, it, if you can do it, right? Look at Morag, what he did, how many, how oh, many, yeah. many takedowns he got in that fight? Against who, Peter, or? 
Against which one? Yeah, I think it was Peter, bro. So like, it was like 48 shots. Know, but dog, it was like 43 <laughs> shots. Obviously, Peter keep getting back up, but bro, did that guy ever get tired? No, he fucking kept going. Yeah, but when you take a guy down, when you can and take Peter a, was getting back up every single time go on his back, but he kept throwing him down and throwing him. But you know, I'm like, oh my. But God. if but if that it was, wasn't hard to take down, then I, if you just do it, if you take him down in the first shot, if it doesn't yeah. take a few, you don't get. T- you know what I mean? Like it's like when you're like a, it's like when you're a black, it's like when you roll with like a blue belt. Yeah. Like even if they're really good, like there's just some things you're not gonna, like yeah. it's just not gonna be the same work for you, like for them, you know. Yeah. So you go with a blue belt. I just feel like I also you go with a blue belt, right? Like you're gonna you do the moves to him, and it, even if it's not like um. Even if you're not killing him, like he's gonna be a lot more tired than you are usually. Well, it depends yeah. how much gas tank they have, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, because some blue belts are just all gas. And you're like, oh, this guy may be tired. That's how, I mean, I'm 30, I'm old now, so that's why. But I'm also, like you said, like it depends on how you train, because if you're constantly always training to do those moves, then I feel like doing those moves in the fight, it just, for sure. no, it's, for just sure. it's just doing them, you know what I mean? Like for us, like for me, when I saw, when I saw Morag doing those tests over and over and over, I was tired after like the 10 round he took. I'm like, God damn, bro, how many, how many shots are you gonna retake? And I was tired for him, but he wasn't, you know? So it's like, also it depends on like how, exactly what I say, how you train, you know? I feel like another guy that was doing that a lot was uh, Aljim as Aljim, Aljim, well. He was going for a lot of takedowns, not Aljim. as many. Aljo, he was doing a, he was doing a lot, a lot but of. He was um, efficient. He was efficient though. He'll he's shoot, more, he's he'll more get your efficient. Back, yeah. And he sl- he, and he just you down. stays in there. Yeah. But then yeah, I know. Listen, there's. I've had some fights where I had to get like I've had a fight where I've gotten like some 10, 15 round takedown fights. You know, those are the tough ones because like when a guy gets up, you're like, damn. You know, yeah. that was one of the things that later in my career, I tried to master more in the beginning, like my first five fights, I had to do a lot of takedowns because I would get, my, I wasn't, my base wasn't that good. Yeah. I had to really, it took me a lot, it took me like I three think or that's four that, years to learn my base and like I think that's, I think that's when, shit. yeah, I feel that that's when, that's when um like your mental starts to play a big, a big, yeah. a big factor in the fight. Cause even for me, like I remember my last, my last fight, which was like two years ago. When I took down the guy, um, I remember I took him down, and I'm like, all right, he's down. I took his back. I almost choked him. And then somehow he ended up reversing. I ended up on bottom. I ended up going for, a, for moves. Yeah, but how I many turned. fights you got? That one, what fight was that for you? Three. See? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but, the first five yeah, or six yeah, yeah, fights, yeah, bro. Of course. You got, that's what happened to me. Bro, I had six yeah. fights like that. Yeah. Side control, re-rolled. Yeah. And then you, you, know, like, and then you start thinking like, damn, like... Even for me, when I, he got back up, I'm like, oh my God, this guy keep getting up, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so it's like, how, and then I start thinking, how many shots do I have left, right? Because it's, like, uh, it's like you prepare, but then when you start seeing your cardio and you're like, wait, hold on, I don't want to shoot yet because you know. I still got this much time. Yeah, 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 so know. it's like, I cannot, but then you, and then sometimes you're forced to it because it's like, now things are going, you're like, all right, I got to shoot again. And then you get sprawled down and you're like, oh my God. Right, and then when you see people shoot, dog, you're with the takedown. Like, you didn't, yeah, you knew how much gas, like, you kind of know your own gauge, so you don't want to. Sometimes people watch my fights and be like, yo, why didn't you take him down? I'm like, dog, you don't know yeah, what the fuck know. was happening yeah. inside, bro. Inside, yeah, only you know, bro. Like, I was like, yo, feel? I was in Bangla Road three weeks ago, dog. Don't worry about <laughs> 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 I was with Ilya Saporia drinking wine, dog. That's why, motherfucker, if you don't see me shoot. And striking is way easier, dog, in fighting. You know, it's kind of fucked up to say, you know, like it's kind of like a bad thinking t- for me, too, you know, because I'm taking damage and shit. But like when you're tired, I'd rather just get hit in the face and like get. And in 1FC, if you don't, if you, if bro, if you miss a takedown in 1FC, you get knee to the head. Oh, that's another thing. That's a, oh, that's, that's a game changer right there, too. That's a game changer, bro. Yeah, bro. That that's... will change your whole outlook on fighting, bro. You don't realize it, like, oh, especially with the wrestling, because, bro, in UFC, these grapplers. Do you made it when they had kicks to the head? Yeah, uh, no. Oof. I just got out. I got in just before, bro. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, right, Ryzen, Ryzen still do that. Yeah. R- I don't know. I don't. Yeah, know they do. They do. You know who does it? Stump still. Full. I. But I have fought with kicks to the head. Oh, okay. Full metal dojo. Full metal dojo. Okay. I fought four times. No, three times. I fought kick to the head. Dang. And bro, throwing a kick to the head is a lot harder than it looks. People are like, oh, it's barbaric it's and like shit. It's kind of bad. But, bro, it's hard because you know what happens when you go to kick the guy in the head? It's same thing with, like I was saying with the judo, bro. It's a lot of space. Bro, I've tried it like three times. In all my fights, I tried that shit. And I'm going for the kick in the head, going crazy, just like kicking like an animal. Like, ah! And then the guy gets up. So that's what happened with me, you know, like my experience. Now in 1FC, in that Lee Kai Win fight, when he dropped me like 32 times in the first round, when I was getting up, he ate, he need me about 52 times getting up. I remember. I got need like so much. But that's all right. Your boy was a little bit elevated, so I think that helped me get through it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, so, so let's get, let's get okay, into yeah, it. Okay, yeah. Hey, one hour in, and we broke down 
We still probably haven't even technically broke down the Oilers and Tapuria fight. All right, UFC 298. We got a big one. We're coming back. The UFC is back in Anaheim. Alex Volkanovski, the reigning defending featherweight king, taking on Ilya Tapuria. I don't know, Chino. I'm going with Alex Volkanovski, round three, TKO. He's going to cook the legs, make him take away his power in the first round, movement, working feints, hard to touch, not getting touched at all, put the pressure. Second round, put him against the fence, take him down. Third round, we finish him medium rare. Cooking with Volk, round three. Who you got, Chino? Uh, well, we talked about this. Um, I think... We don't, I, know, I we don't know. We don't know. We're going to be in our, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to have the upcoming young stud undefeated, uh, Ilya Tiporia. Second to third round KO. Nah, if what do you he gets, mean? if he gets, if he gets his hands on him. Ah. Um, once again, we talked about this, and it's like the whole, the whole like uh, having the heavy hand power. He's uh, he, punch he his chance. To, he knows how to. He knows how to how, know, how to put the combinations together. Um, and maybe in one of Vogue's trying to get his trying to cook his legs. Maybe trying to like, catch him. Coming in, oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah, which which I feel like Volks have been getting caught before like that with Max Holloway as well. Mm. So that's the only thing I'm saying. One of those one of those heavy hands can can make a lot of damage. Um, hey, to be fair, he hasn't fought a puncher in a while. That, that, that's that's true. I mean, like I said, the Max only person Holloway three times never got a standing KO that we know of. Yeah, um, yeah, your Rodriguez picks you apart, but doesn't really. Uh, just not the the ferocious power. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't does does not have, he, he's have the, the um, put you out, but a different type of put you out. Yeah, different. I feel Korean like more like, more like TKO, TKO style. Korean zombie, not really a knockout artist. Nah. Brian Ortega. You got fucking Emmett. Josh Aldo, Emmett is Aldo, the one, and he never made it. He yeah, no, nah, Aldo, nah, Aldo. And Aldo was not a. By the time he fought Aldo, Aldo wasn't. Um, it wasn't the same Aldo. Not the same Aldo. It was the same. He was still good, but he wasn't like. Even in UFC, he wasn't really KOing anybody. Has he got a KO in the UFC? I don't think so, no. Maybe against Hernando oh. Moicano, um, Aldo. Aldo. Um, Non-UFC Char fights. Charmendes? Oh, that's with, right. With yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful knee, man. I remember the knee. Oh. And, then the, and then the war, the second round, right? Yeah. They were probably both. They were both elevated, dog, for sure. Yeah. Those are the good old days. Yeah. See, like, don't, all right, like guys like that, they don't feel bad about... about uh, Cause they were like, "Yo, Chad Mendes and him, look at their bodies, bro." Like, but but I definitely I definitely feel that if this fight if this fight is gonna like if it's gonna go oh, yeah, five rounds, it if it's gonna uh, go five rounds, it's gonna go for Volks. I think Volks will win a five a five rounds against Ilya, uh, because they're both very. I feel like they're both very tough. I don't think Ilya's gonna it's gonna be an easy easy fight to get finished. Um, I, I see him in the five rounds. He didn't look tired uh, in the in the fight uh, with Josh Emmett. Yeah. Um, he it was five rounds? It was five, it was, oh, it was five rounds until, no, I mean, he finished them, right? At the end, or? I don't think so. No. I don't know. Um, I forgot. I, I totally forgot now. But but I, I know I know they were they were going into the fifth, and it was, he, was still, he still looked fresh. He okay. Didn't look tired. But here's the catch with those, though. When you're dominating a guy for the whole fight, when you're fighting your pace, you don't yeah. get tired. You know what I'm saying? So I think I, yeah. I, I don't know what happened. I didn't watch that fight, to be fair, but. It's probably like he was probably just keeping his distance and just kept yeah. him at bay the whole time. I, I, I wonder how's it gonna be if it's gonna be Volks putting the pressure forward. Is it gonna be him putting the pressure forward? It's not gonna forward? be him, dog. Uh, that's what I'm saying. How is he gonna? I don't know, bro. How are you gonna? Because if Volks coming forward, he's gonna run into the punches, right? Which is gonna make him want to change levels. But, which but I feel Volk like, doesn't come forward. That's what I mean. He like, like, he's not gonna go forward. So who's gonna go forward? So they're gonna be. In the, they're gonna be. Uh, Ilias has to go forward. each other. That's the thing. Uh huh. It's the only way he fights, dog. He mm -hmm. plots forward. Like this is what I'm saying by basic. Like it's not that he's basic. It's just that he's. But the thing classic. is, when you go, when you're going he forward, exactly how you would coach somebody in the very beginning, where Vogue has that, but then took it to his game. Exactly, know? but that's what I'm saying. Like if if if, if Ilya goes forward and 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 Vogue's try to punch by going backwards, it's a big chance for 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 Ilya to open up his punches, yeah. right? But Vogue's is so fast that he can kick and get away. You know. And, he's, and, and also remember the 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 Vogue has longer reach. I was just gonna His say that reach is so long. I totally forgot about that dog. So long, I feel like he can keep him from the outside as well. He's gonna destroy him. Now that I thought, bro, honestly, I didn't even think about when he squared up with Tapoya. You know what yeah. he told him? He's like, "You're tiny." He goes, yeah. "I didn't know you were so small." 
this guy is used to fighting giants yeah. all the time. Where he's had to fight a different game. He can actually fight Ilya, a whole different style that we've never even seen because he's got the longest reach in the featherweight division. And he's the shortest guy. He's got gorilla arms. So, so one of the things that I feel like also Alex might do is that he's going to change stance to softball. All day long, high kicks, back and forth. Because he does a lot oh, of that. Yeah. And, that's, and that's, the, that's the one thing that Ilya has is this hand being too low. His, his right hand is getting kicked on the right side a lot. And I feel like both going softball, going for, going for the head kicks, and going for the low kick, so he, he changes a lot in those little feints. That was gonna fuck up a little Ilya's uh, thing. But once again, like I said, you know, like it's, a, it's it's the game, bro. Like anything can happen, bro. One bad move from one of them, it has to be very, very methodical. Everything has to be uh, very gets, tight. Any open window, go to sleep. I hope he does it like the DJ, where DJ got knocked out by the flying knee, and then he won by a flying knee the next fight. Or maybe he gets stopped by head kick, and then he wins by head kick. Who? Volk. It's Could be, head. and it's, that that's the dope. biggest. That's one of the big. Like you said, it's, he doesn't check his you hands. You know what's are, funny? They both got the, dropped the same way in the UFC. Yep, yeah. because they're both short. Yeah, but now they're both the same height. They're both short. Yeah, I think for sure Volk can reach his head. He's longer. He's not much of a high kicker, you know. He's, he's, he's his longer, arms are so. way longer. He's got a long and, and orangutan it, it, arms. The way the way I'm thinking as as well is power, which Ilya has. Cons but Volk has power too, dog. Yeah, but I feel like Volk is, more, like Volk is more. Chin. I feel like Volk is more of a of a of a. Um, he has power, but it's more of a tapper. He doesn't really sit down and trade as much. I, I know, but he can. But, but he can. He, he can. But he, he won't. But, but he won't do that to this fight. I don't think he's gonna he's sit down smart. and bang and him. I, like, I, really bad. And I feel like he's gonna just give him a jab, like jab him, like he like he did to. Jair. Um, Jair, bro. He was jabbing the fuck out of him, bro. Like bah, so bah. fast. I think uh, pretty much he just. Everybody he's, just... He's 35, 30, 35 years old, but he's so fast. You yeah. Know? All it's right. It's impressive. We got like an hour. That was an hour of... <laughs> well, that's, 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 okay. that's on that one. Perfect. Ilya Tapoya. In the co-main event, we got a banger. Robert Whitaker versus Paul Acosta. I just did a breakdown on this, bro. For go, me... I got to go with Whitaker, man. I've broken down... I've done... Bro, with Paul Acosta, he's just such a wild card, you know? Is he going to make weight? Is he gonna show up? You know what I'm saying? It's just like yo, I've done like a, I'm always yeah. doing. I've done like three podcasts where like I do like a but prediction let's say on his fight and then something happens. Let's you know? say everything goes well. He hasn't so, fought in a while. Well, if everything goes well, what do you think? Because now uh, Whitaker's coming from a loss, right? Against Whitaker's Duplessis. coming from a loss to DDP where he didn't look that yeah. good. So then we don't really know if just Duplessis was that good or if Whitaker. I mean, I want to say Whitaker was a little off that night, you know? Because I think the year break would be good for him, you know. Yeah. Bro, the keys to victory for Whitaker, he's got to be on the outside, stick and move, and maybe he can get Paula Costa rushing in. He can catch him rushing in and stop him, like, meaning, like, like take him down. Get it known. See, that's the thing. I was talking about this before. Um, I don't know if I'm Paul, if I'm Robert Whitaker, I don't know if I want to spend energy trying to take him down, you know, like, if I'm going to be trying to, like, put that on him, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I'm going to be taking take energy trying to take him down, or I'll just pick him apart from the outside and, like, make him get desperate, and when he charges in with something crazy, because Paula Costa kind of plots forward, you know? Yeah. Catching him when he's coming in, you know? And then sticking and moving, bro. Um, I think maybe if you're trying to, like, wrestle him against the against the, the the cage and trying to make him tire, because his muscles, right? Like, yeah, trying to get him yeah, tired, yeah. maybe, yeah, a little sure. bit. Like, trying to, like, stick to the outside, but once he comes forward, trying to, like, go for the takedown, put him against the cage. Trying to I, I, I have Whitaker on this one. I, I just don't see, I don't see Costa having much to do. Like, he's, he's he has... Yeah, he has power. Like the, he's a guy that he has power like anybody else. But like, you re he saying. really he does he doesn't have like he's not crisp in his hands. He's not like yeah. he has a good boxing. He doesn't. No, have, like, he doesn't have anything. What does no. he have? Like, he yeah. even, like, he just, he's just just strong. He's a strong he's guy. A guy. He's yeah. very strong. You know, he has heart. I mean, I would say he has heart. You know, like he's a. He's yeah, for, for sure. Reason, but um, a three five and a three five minute round. He hasn't man, fought. So. He hasn't fought in a long time though. He hasn't fought yes. since Luke Rockhold. So I'm interesting for that one. I got Paul Acosta just on youth alone. If the Robert Way St. Roderick Whitaker who shows up for DDP, I don't think he's gonna win, but I don't think Rob that Robert Whitaker won't beat anybody, you know? So yeah. maybe he was off no, that I think, night. I, we'll think, see. I think it's gonna be for him. Hopefully the year look, he had, Robert Whitaker hasn't fought in about a year. The last fight he had was with Volk and Jair Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. The same card, like so July. So he has a little bit of a year off and uh, Paul Acosta hasn't fought like in two years. His last yeah. fight was against Luke Rockhold in Utah when oh God, Usman I remember, got I remember, out. I remember that fight, man. When Usman got knocked out, that was a slop yeah. dog fight. But that was also in the goddamn, that was in the Utah elevation where like, yeah. I would never do everybody, fights there, everybody, was, yeah. everybody got gas there. Everybody got you know? gas, I know. So I got Paulo Costa just on youth alone, you know. Even though, like I said, I'm not sleeping on Robert Whitaker. I'm cheering for Robert Whitaker. 
my heart's gonna go with Paulo Costa, even though ah, I say that, but I don't know if I believe it, bro, because I don't know, man. You can, yo, Robert Whitaker, like, let's see, let's see, bro. I think Whitaker's a killer. I think he that's just, what I'm he, saying. I dog. think he'll have a bad day. Yeah, he got. Yeah, yeah like it. I don't think a, I, I don't think a guy like Whitaker loses two in a row. I don't think so either. Like, that's not a guy who's gonna go away to like now. He's yeah. gonna look how much better he did against Izzy like after he lost, you know? Yeah. Like he, he I think it's fight. another one. I feel like I feel like those you know those fights did you take like a year off? Yo, he could be back? yo, he I don't know if Izzy's got his number, but like you say, you, we were saying before, when you see somebody lose, you know, Strickland beating him might have opened up some eyes for him that he saw, maybe some windows he saw, you know? Yeah. I don't know, two fights though against a champ and he lost. That's yeah. kind of done. So Whitaker is kind of a must win for him. And Paula Costa is such a wild card. But I got Paula Costa on youth alone. And he's been. Wow. All right, next one is a big one, actually. Yeah. So we got Ian Gary. Oh, wait, that's the next one? Oh, I thought it was. um. Oh, Ian Gary? Yeah. He's ahead of. um. Sandy Rousseau. Okay, so Ian yeah. Gary versus who? Oh. Neon. Oh, who? Neon. Geoff Neon. Geoff Neon. Right? Yeah. What do you think? You like Ian Gary? Ian Gary's legit, like bro. Young he's Gary. tough, I, man. I think, he's got I think good jiu-jitsu. Another guy, he's just he's coming up hungry. Another guy, he he's uh maybe he's been he's been he's been putting he's been putting the work. He's been getting a lot of shit. Sean so far, so, talking so, shit, so far he talked. Yeah, but I mean, everybody's gonna talk shit. I mean, everybody talks shit about McGregor too, and then he still came out on on top, you know. And I feel like he's doing the same thing. He's following the steps, of course. I feel like uh, as a as um, McGregor, McGregor did. Bah. You know, he talk, he talk, he talk, he talk, he talk. I said, no, I feel like that's an Irish thing to do. Nah, bro. But he's but also he's delivering. Weak. He's also delivering. But, I mean, nah, he, a lot of decisions, bro. But, but I mean, like he's still winning. I mean, like, he's, he's winning. winning. He's I winning. Know, bro. You know what I mean? He's winning. Uh, is, this is. I mean, I don't like the. Like he had the same banter as Conor McGregor. It's like, yo, you got to be original, bro. Like, make up your own lines. Like, in his post-fight press conference, he's, like, talking like McGregor. Yeah, you know? I just feel like he look up to I'm him a lot. To, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I he know. look up to him a lot. That's and then, true. And then, I mean, he's still... I mean, That's like, a different way to look at it. That's a yeah. less hater way. I'm looking at it like a hater, you know? Like, yeah. yo, be yourself, motherfucker. But the other guy's, like, yeah. paying tribute to the next Irish champ, yeah, the last yeah. Irish but Don't get me wrong. He, he does have to come out. At one point, he has to come out with bro. some shit, you know? Yeah, I hate um, when these guys on the post-fight press conference are like, 50 Gs, dude. I'm like, yo, that's already been said, dog. Yeah. You gotta be 50 like, Gs, Nate, baby. Nate yeah, Diaz, but like, bro. Think about Nate Diaz, The thing dog. like, a lot of these things, and it happens, is the it becomes so trendy that when something happens and it's like that's the first thing that comes out. It's like when somebody wins, yeah. what the first thing they do? They want to walk like Connor, right? They do this thing. Oh, Why? Because yeah. it becomes it becomes so iconic. It's a trend center, bro. And it just become yeah, it becomes like oh the 50 G's baby. Like they bro, even even in, in, in one championship they say that. Because it becomes so iconic. It's like the first thing that comes to your mind to say when it comes down to that, right? Like, oh the 50 G's is like the the, the number one thing that you wanna say. And how you say it because it was so iconic, you know? And I feel like the same thing happens when you talk about like I'm not here to take part. I'm, I'm I'm here to take over. It's like, yeah, Connor already said it, but it's like at that moment, it's just the right thing to say. It comes out. It comes out. But it, I I know I you probably don't want to do. You know, I yeah. wouldn't. You know, I would try to do. You gotta make your own lane, dog. That's of course, of course. It's just like not everybody has it. You know, to nah. like create your own stuff. You know, and but I feel like it, sometimes it comes it, it can comes across that way. Like yo, you know, like yo, come on, bro, start start being a copycat. But yes. You know, yeah. it's like at the same time, if you cannot come with your own shit, you just you just kind of like say with somebody else. Yeah, well, instead, especially but. when you're under lights in the microphone, you just yeah. want to scream some shit. You know? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like sometimes, it's like, ah, right. uh, the All right, well, you got know. all right. Geoff Neal. I mean, that's gonna that's a that's a pick 'em fight for. It's not a pick 'em fight. Geoff Neal had a tough fight against, um, Shavkat. Yeah. He fucking put a good little he put a good little pace on Shavkat. He's got some slick hands, but. I mean, just on, I got Ian Gary, just on, like, he's the guy. But I wouldn't be, don't be surprised if Geoff Neal is a dark horse. But I see Ian Gary just picking him apart from the outside. Kicks, uh, decision win, and, uh, you know. Yeah, I, I think so. It's going to so be I, an average, I think it's going to be like every other fight of the night. Like, it's going to be the classic striker fight. It's going to be yeah. punch, kick, I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm calling, I'm calling Ian Gary by a classic decision. Like, yeah. Yeah, just I, gonna I, st I don't really jab have him, move, low kick, you know, yeah. Geoff Neal, nothing really crazy. Like I said, I've only seen him fight, you know, honestly, I've only seen him lose. Like, I don't even know if I've really seen him win. It's just he fights top guys and loses, you know? He only fought, but yeah, he lost five fights. But, oh, really? Yeah. All right, boom. Uh, next fight is the banger, though. Let's, oh, let's close yeah. it out with this one, and we'll, yeah, we'll close sure. the show. Henry Sohudo versus Marab. I don't even know how to say his name still, dog. Devash, versus, we're just going to call him Marab. What do you think, bro? My, yo, first of all, props to Henry Cejudo 
For the comeback. For fighting a super top contender. Yeah. Um, after a two-year layoff, Aljo, and then, yeah. oh, I lost Aljo, barely lost a close fight against Aljo, yeah. and decides to fight another top guy in Marab. Now... Teammate also, you know, so he's... he's, he's and Uh No, um, Aljo's teammate. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. Exactly. Now, here's the catch, though. I, at first, I thought it was a crazy fight for Cejudo, like crazy tough fight, but it might be a good matchup because you're not really going to take down Cejudo, right? And then if you do, uh, it's going to take a long time. Aljamain took him down, but he couldn't really hold Did he hold him? I don't know. Uh, yeah, at one point oh, he did. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Well, but Aljo, maybe Cejudo, I feel like, Cejudo I feel like could have Aljo... been off. He could have been off, bro. He hasn't fought in like three years, dog. That's true, too. I mean, uh, that, drinking all the time. There's just... a lot of possibilities on that one because it was his first fight coming back. I don't know how serious he probably took this one. Plus, um, maybe he didn't expect for for Aljo to to take him down like that. Yeah. But uh, also, like it's, remember, fights makes. I mean, Aljo is longer than Marab. I think this uh, is a good match for Henry Cejudo. If Marab, yeah. if Marab's take, if Marab is this is a uh, game plan is to always take down. You don't really, uh, you don't want to fucking fuck with this uh, Olympic I think wrestler. So, I think so, and your game plan is to take the guy exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And Cejudo. He's got good hands. You've been training with, with Mike Tyson, too. He's got good hands. He's always going to have the wrestling. He's got that yeah. uh, Olympic wrestling. It's like training with it's like Frank, training with Frank Hickman, bro. Yeah. No matter what, yeah. this guy's going to take you down. Or like, yeah. it, and to take him down, it's like yeah. once in a while, you know, like by a fluke or something, you know? So I feel like he's always got that. And, in and, him. and I feel like another thing with like uh, Aljo is Aljo has the jiu-jitsu. The yes. Maroc don't yes. have. Yes. Maroc has the wrestling. Yes. But I, if, yes. if we look at They're Peter, if, if we look at Peter Yan, and Peter Yan was able to get up every time, I feel like bro, that's I feel gonna be like it's, Peter Yan. Yeah, listen, no. that's my boy. I trained Peter Yan for years, but I trained with Peter, so I don't want to say nothing about training. But I know people's strength and weaknesses, and like, yo, if Peter Yan was able to get up from you twenty five times, like, yeah, you're gonna have a problem with Cejudo. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I, and so I mean, I, I know Peter Yan. Peter Yan, my boy, you might take him down. I know his hips, dog. I know Peter Yan's hip strength, dog. Like, yeah. I know how what, what it would be to hold him down, you know. So yeah. Yeah, dog. And if he beats Marab, which is a really... It's a tough fight for Marab, actually. It's I a think harder so. fight for Marab so. because so, yeah. you're, like, on the number one contender. Yeah. You beat fucking Peter Yan, and you're going to fight this guy. This is kind of fucked up, you know? Yeah. Maybe they don't want you to be champ, dog, so... Not just that, but right now, he, he's not... He's, he's not he very smart. He is funny, but he's got fight. good banter. He didn't want to fight oh, Aljo, so, he so he's going to be in the... And now, it's all about him winning this one, and if he wins, he goes against the contender, whoever, whoever goes between now uh, the next... The next the next card, which is the one. Here's the catch, though. Next. Henry Hudo, Henry Cejudo is a better matchup for Sugar Sean than Aljo, because Henry Cejudo's got a huge head, dog. He's got a blocked chin, you know. And to beat Sean Sugar Sean O'Malley, you need a good chin, dog. Where Aljo, he's good, but his his chin is not his best strength. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Aldo's been dropped, he gets cracked, and he kind of fights like he's always scared to get knocked out. You know? Yeah. When he fights, you can see he's that like he just doesn't want that. So. Yeah. Uh, which Henry Cejudo doesn't fight like that. Yeah, there's a different fight. Henry, it's a different fighter. Henry but also has he, a good he, he, chin he had, and he, he can take down Sean. Long, yeah, he had a very long layup. And a long layup against Aljo, yeah. bro. Imagine a fresh Cejudo. And he's older, bro. That no. guy's like 36, 35, dog. Yeah, yeah. true that. All right. Uh, but to bring us back to that card now. So, uh, oh, hold on, hold on. I got Marab. All right, I got Marab. Oh. I'm going with Marab. Oh, fuck, going against Cejudo, dog. Yeah, I got Marab on youth. I'm going all the youth guys, bro. I'm just like going I'm, with the. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some for Cejudo just because I feel oh, like bro. I feel like he has the hands. Um, I feel he you. has. A, I feel like the wrestling is gonna. It's, it's, it's gonna, gonna, gonna close. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, Damn. And it's only three rounds, bro. It's only three rounds. Wow. This is like a Whitaker. It's the same it's situation. Like, it's like a Whitaker situation. Like yeah. Whitaker is not a like a former champ is not gonna lose two in a row, and Cejudo's not gonna lose two in a row. Wow, okay, I think I'm going to make a game time decision. I'm going with Cejudo, dog, just on that alone. I'm going, uh, man, my last video, I picked Costa and Whitaker. Now I'm thinking I'm doing a renege. I'm going back. I'm picking Whitaker and Cejudo just because I can't see two former champions losing two in a row going on a streak that, like that. that. That's all, that's and it's not against for. guys that are going to be yeah. like, I don't see a Tony well, Ferguson Mar Mar route for Mar any Mar of these guys. Been, Mar 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 is a, a killer. Bro, he's been a killer. Oh, bro. I don't know, Marab. Nah, dog. He doesn't have no. He doesn't no, bro. An Olympian. You don't see him. I'm just thinking, don't see him losing. Aljo's ju -ju no, no. I don't see him. I don't see him out wrestling Cejudo. Like Aljo jujitsu Cejudo. What, what, which happen, is what, what I happens? Thought. What happens if that happens? What if he just like? Oh, he's the real deal, bro. He's the real deal. Well, like, and I, I don't like think Cejudo's Cejudo an Olympian champion. He cannot get out. Like he no, can. No, I don't think he Olympian. Can't get out wrestling, bro. No, 
Yes. He's going to get all wrestled. He cannot take you down. Okay, here's what I think. Can he get taken down 100%? No, 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 no. I think the opposite. I don't think he's going to be able to take down Marab, but I don't think Marab can take him down. That's what I'm saying. They probably cancel each other out in that area. They're so going to cancel that, each other that's out. Why, that's, why, that's why I feel like now, they're going to they're gonna probably try to clinch, uh, like trying to go for takedowns, but also like the feints to go for uppercuts and like trying to catch each other. But what and about Marab? Does Marab... I, I, I think that, does that's... Does Marab kick? I don't know. I've never seen him kick. So yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't really I watched remember, him. But like, but one, the one thing I can say is that um, uh, Sehuda does kick. Oh, and he yeah. kicked so hard. Oh, I forgot about that. So he that kicked. He fights like he does the Taekwondo. Bro, Suhudo's dope, dog. We forgot how dope Suhudo was. I mean, he had to open up. Suhudo and Volk would have been a dope fight, man. That would have been a great super fight. Ah, But he would have had to go up. Yeah, I, 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 I think I think in that one, I think Volks would have smoked him. <laughs> For real? I think Volks has his wrestling. But, bro, Marab and Volk is a dangerous fight. I would feel like for Volk, dog. Oh man, wow, this is a it's a great fight, dog. Honestly, I'm, I'm I'll make my pick on Cejudo, but I wouldn't be surprised but, but either that's way. That's, like, that's this a 35er, I guess a 45er. Who? The, these are 35ers I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, but um, Marab is frame. Marab is like a Volk at 35, though. Cause like he's put together, like the way he beat Peter Yan oh, is like okay, a Volk okay. style win. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's boom, true. Boom, high low, high low. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just pressure, and yeah. he doesn't get tired. Yeah. He's from Jordan, so he's got that like Middle East. He's got that Dagestan, like he's got that uh, Eastern European, like the, the, that uh, Caucasus strength, dog. Yeah. You know, like the mountain man strength. So, yeah. damn, dog, this is a dope ass card. UFC 298, and guys, oh, I gotta make a little promo. Don't forget, don't miss out. We're gonna have a huge fight card coming up. We're gonna wrap this puppy up, and guys, don't forget, we are back at the Hard Rock Live for UFC 298. Make sure to grab your tickets now on Eventbrite. We're going to be hosting the shows. We're going to have live DJ in between the rounds. We're going to have Harmony Badger Hour, co live commentary. We're going to give our live pro fight bets and picks. We're going to have the shows. Everybody's going to be out there. We're going to have a good time. So make sure to come back out. We had a great showing for the Sean Strickland card, and we want to make it even bigger now this time. So Hard Rock Live, join the Honey Badger Hour podcast if you guys are in South Florida. We're going to be out there doing the thing. Show some support. Show some love. We're going to have some merch for sale. Come get a picture with your boy. Chino, no, my brother. brother, that was awesome. We're going to have to do a, a new... We were supposed to... Guys, before we got here, when Chino got here today, we were supposed to break down the three UFCs, and we thought it was going to be like 20 minutes. Sorry. We ended up chatting for two topic. hours. We ended up having a whole nother podcast within a podcast. <laughs> We're gonna have to edit half of this. Most of this was like a therapy session. We did some. We did it all. Yeah, man. Thank you, my brother. No. You're going to Seattle. I'll see you next week. I'm gonna be covering classes for you, so you guys for don't sure, be slagging man. that boxer. You better come get some work with the Badger. Yes, sir. And guys, stay tuned. We got to think of a name for our cast. Gonna be. We're gonna be release an episode once a week. We're gonna get together and we're just gonna chat. We're gonna talk about oh, yeah. upcoming events. Chatting training. with the Badger, no, no, like Chino, some, no, like a chat, chi chats with Chino. I don't know the Badger and Chino, something the oh JX, the JX three HB collab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something, <laughs> something will come out. I'm gonna wear the JX three shirt, and the next time I'm gonna do my. I get that. I get that. I get the the HB. You got it. You got it. Oh, we should have had one today. All right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, Honey Badger Hour. We are.